Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the second ninja build I mentioned a few days ago I had casting speed shards equipped for. It's a way to make its reaping chakram augment kill groups of enemies much more efficiently and with much higher scaling. Because of the extensive amount of casting Reaping Chakram requires, I would not recommend using this for solo survival as all Reaping Chakram builds run into KPM problems. But this is probably the best variant of it. We reach approximately 80 KPM. I do not know how high this scales, but because I could easily see 800k plus heat dots on the first hit, I imagine this can scale to at least level 1000 to 2000 without armor strip. Today's synergy relies on Zada's Whisper solving the problems with Reaping Chakram. This is the Blazing Chakram augment that doubles its damage per enemy it hits, and adds a little extra health orb drop chance. While fun, Blazing Chakram historically has had KPM problems due to how its tracking works. Throwing the Chakram alone makes it bounce off of enemies. Holding throw in the Chakram makes it punch through enemies instead of bouncing off. But if you cast Divine Spears first, each time the Chakram hits a speared enemy, it will duplicate itself up to a limit. Regardless, you can only kill approximately 10 enemies at most per throw. At a certain point, the Chakrams lose their ability to home and duplicate flying off in random directions. Zadis Whisper fixes this by forcing them to stay in orbit. Chakram also shares the same rare property with Tenet Archiplasmor, being able to hit the same enemy more than once. By trapping Chakram in Zadis Whisper, you can hit the same enemy multiple times and also cause significantly more bounces than normal to hit all the other enemies. The whole throw is also significantly better because punching through enemies when bouncing around Zada makes it much less likely to exit the bubble. Tap throw has a habit of still leaving on rebound due to how small Zada bubbles are. A duo comp with Meg's Magnetize would be lethal. This principle requires Zada's bubbles to be overlapping, so at least loose grouping is required, which is where Megas Anomaly or Exodia Hunt comes in. Megas Anomaly is more practical due to the long setup time, you want to make sure you kill as many enemies as possible per rotation. Therefore, the 30 meter suck on it is more desirable. You can alternatively use Scourge for the bullet attractor effect instead, freeing up your helmet slot for whatever grouping skill you want. There is one last interaction to mention though. You have to proc Zadis Whisper before casting Divine Spears. If you cast Divine Spears first, you cannot proc Zadis Bubble on enemies. You also cannot refresh existing Zadis Bubble on enemies once they are speared. So only spear enemies right before you cast Chakram. This also leads into our casting speed arc on shards topic. I mentioned I double slotted casting shards on Neja. His 4, which is required for his 2 to duplicate chakrams, has significant end lag to its animation. This is a dead zone where you cannot cast any of his other abilities or use any weapons, basically you can't do anything. But there is no animation tied to it. You also cannot queue abilities in advance anymore, so attempting to hold down your 2 to charge a chakram during this window will not do anything and you will not notice until a second or two later. It's extremely annoying and waste time, so maximizing your casting speed not only makes the DPS rotation faster, but also shrinks the end leg so you are much less likely to accidentally hold press Blazing Chakram too early. Let's look at that Neja build. This is the version I made with Magus Anomaly for grouping with Zada's Whisper. If you use Scourge for the Bullet Attractor instead and use a grouping helmet, you will need much more range than shown here. We run Brief Respite with two Augur mods, Augur Secrets and my Epitaph only has one this time since I'm using a Heat Inherit Primer build. We have 230% energy to shield conversion and casting Blazing Chakram costs 17.5 energy. This restores 40 shields per cast which is just enough to fully reset our shield gate with a DK Dragon Key equipped. I've slotted Controlled Slide because I don't like Nezha's passive but this is entirely optional. And you can run whatever you want here. Archon Vitality doubles the amount of heat procs we create with Blazing Chakram. Because Chakram force procs heat and the damage doubles every time it bounces due to the augment, we will end up with massive heat dots this way. Equilibrium is slotted because Chakram produces a ton of health orbs. So long as our companion has Synth Fiber equipped, we can pick these up to refill energy even if our health is full. Natural Talent is stacked with Casting Speed Archon Shards as I mentioned and I even brought Matarai for more casting speed and plus 40% strength from Double Void Slinging. We reach plus 162.5 casting speed today or Divine Spears cast 2.625 times faster than normal. Arcane Energize for energy in a pinch if you bottom up and kill with a normal weapons and Molt Augmented for extra strength. 
While Acolytes cannot be zata procs, you can still take them directly with the Chakram to debuff them for more damage. A max multi augmented with the Matarai Sling Strength buff active pins us at 326 strength, or a 3.25 times damage vulnerability modifier, which will definitely help us shredding Acolytes. It's hard to get the Chakram to bounce off Acolytes to kill them with Reaping Chakram augment damage stacks, so I would recommend just taking the Acolyte directly for the debuff and then shooting it to death. This particular build does not have Rolling Guard as I couldn't fit it, but if you really want it, it drops Streamline. But between the high strength Halo, I need to cast Divine Spears as part of the DPS rotation, and Zadis Whisper stopping afflicted enemies from being able to shoot you, Rolling Guard is optional. If you're using Scorch to make the Bullet Attractor bubbles today instead of Magus Anomaly, these are the only mods you need on it. Nothing affects the bullet attractor field, so sprint speed stat stick buffs and faster reload speed for throwing are all that matters. Otherwise, I would recommend bringing a weapon to kill acolytes with in this slot. The epitaph is being used to mass prime enemies with the Zadis Void Bubble, but it's also being used as a heat and hair primer to significantly boost Reaping Chakram's damage. Independent of the augment or viral procs, proccing heat first with epitaph will buff the ability final scaling by 5.04 times. So if reaping chakram resulted in enough bounces for 32 times damage scaling, epitaph's heat proc will buff it to 161.2 times damage. This is because Heat Inherit uses the heat percent mods of the first heat proc, as well as inheriting the bane multipliers. All abilities are treated as 100% damage scaling in their respective elements, so since Blazing Chakram is considered 100% heat, tagging enemies with an epitaph equipped with plus 225% heat will make Blazing Chakram also hit with plus 225% heat, or 325% heat scaling. I've also said it inherits Banes from the first heat proc, so even though abilities normally cannot use Banes, the 1.55 times Bane from Epitaph gets passed on to Blazing Chakram if you proc heat with Epitaph first. 325% damage times 1.55 is 5.04 times damage scaling. If I add 10 viral procs in, that's a separate 4.25 times multiplier, so shooting your epitaph itself can increase Reaping Chakram's final damage by up to 21.4 times. You can see how this can get out of hand really quickly, and why I saw 800k plus heat dots even without armor strip, and enemies died instantly before Chakram could bounce more. I've also added a single auger mod for status duration and set bonus so that Neja can shield gate. Pistol ammo mutation as needed, and for a full explanation on how Heat Inherit works, I suggest clicking the video at the top right and skipping to the Heat Inherit mechanics timestamp in the description. For your melee, you can bring whatever you want. Its only purpose is to kill problematic enemies like Acolytes or if an Eximus unit somehow survives, which they shouldn't. This is a generic Miwan Sikala Varjit 2 Jai Zaw with Exodia Contagion. It's built full crit on corrosive damage with a primed Bane. And you can replace the Ribbon with the Prime Fury to keep the high attack speed for launching Contagions faster. Otherwise, use whatever melee you want as I said. The Bane does not apply to Acolytes, it's there because of X-Mine units. Focus School is Matarai, as I previously said, for the Sling Strength buff and Power Transfer casting speed buffs. This is not absolutely mandatory, but I would still recommend it for the easy operator revives if you somehow go down. It's very easy to maintain Halo on this build for status immunity since we have very high strength, just keep in mind the one shot range. And the casting speed helps with Divine Spears and Leg, otherwise the pet to bring is also kind of redundant. I just took a Panzer for its infinite cat lives with this basic build, but it really doesn't add much since you already have to shoot your epitaph to proc heat alongside the viral anyways. DPS rotation? Have Zadis Whisper up, group some enemies up, be it your Helmet or Magus Anomaly, and shoot them with Epitaph then cast Divine Spears, then hold cast your Reaping Chakram and watch everything die instantly. It's a really basic rotation and simple to use, but it's just a bit long in casting time to set up to pull the spear with the end lag. Zadis Whisper even adds an extra damage instance, but the damage is well beyond what you need for base steel path. Cheers and have fun. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I'm done with covering Veilbreaker. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.